Lulu Book Trash here, and today we're filming a video that is going to showcase a lot of my issues. <laughs> okay, so let me just start this off by saying that this, what I'm about to show you, was completely unintentional. Well, not completely. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I, sh I, I'm kind of ashamed. I'm kind of like I. I'm just gonna need you to see. Oh god! Oh god! Okay, this is heavy. Um, so you're only seeing like the top half, like quarter actually, of my problem. Hold on, please. I just. <laughs> I accuse you of camping. So allow me to preface this by saying I am not irresponsible. Well, <laughs> okay. I'm not irresponsible. I just have a low amount of self-control. <laughs> and I work very close to a Barnes and Noble. Hence the problem. <laughs> So, um, I'm just going to show you the amalgamation of a lot of my bad financial decisions uh, because I thought this would be an interesting video. And also, there's a lot of them. There's a lot. <laughs> a lot of them. Like, there are some that I knew about beforehand. There are some that I've been waiting to get my hands on. And then there are a couple here that I just picked up just for the fuck of it. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's what we're gonna, that's how, that's how things are gonna go. I'm just gonna go in no particular order. It's just like a stack of books. I don't even remember like when I got these. Yeah, I don't remember when I got a lot of these. So we're just gonna go for it, all right? Oh, and if anyone's wondering, yes, I did do my nails. Don't worry, they're just press-ons. But um, I do feel very sassy with them, you know? So, anyways, the first book we have is Echo North by Joanna Ruth Mayer. Meyer? Something like that. Um, so, I didn't know too much about this book. This is one of the books that I picked up just because it was, in, it was on sale. It was like five bucks off at Barnes & Noble. So, uh, that's why I got it. But also, the premise of it just sounded really cool. And then I started looking through the pages. I start, well, I started flipping through the pages. And I found out that it's actually a fairy tale retelling of the story of East of the Sun, West of the Moon. That's what the story is based off of. Um, and I found the concept to just be really interesting, but also I've just never heard of this author. So I was really interested to see like, like how she would do this, you know? And also fairy tale retellings, I've exclusively just boxed Marissa Meyer into that. And here's another Meyer with a fairy tale retelling. <laughs> so, anyways, there's that. The next book we have is Dread Nation um, by Justina Ireland. This one is set in um in post-Civil War America. The I think it's the dead bodies of the people that served in the Civil War and died um you know rise up from the dead and become zombies so it's basically a uh, historical f historical fiction uh plus the walking dead i was honestly very really interested because um ak there's a colored protagonist in this book and also um post civil war america and zombies yeah i think mainly why i picked this book up is because a it was on sale and B, it actually reminded me of this this movie that I saw called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, uh, where, yeah, it's post-Civil War America, except our president is a vampire hunter and he hunts with a giant axe. It was great. <laughs> it was a great movie. I found it on YouTube. I'm planning on buying it so I can watch it again. It's great. Okay, so the next book we have... Oh, I didn't even take the... I didn't even take the sticker off of this one. Uh, we have... Iron Widow by C by C C Ran J Zhao, I think. I think that's her name. Well, if the sticker wasn't in the way. And he, um, all I know about this book is that it's sci-fi uh, Wu Zetian. 
if you don't know who Wu Zetian is, look her up. She's actually like the most badass female in Chinese history to ever exist, other than Mulan. Um, essentially, she just kind of took control of the entire Chinese empire because fuck it. And it was great. But that's basically all I know about this book, really. Oh, and it's also kind of like, it, it also has like an element of like Darling in the Franks, too. Now that I'm actually rereading this summary. It, it, it's like, it, so it's like sci-fi uh, Wu Zetian empress who like takes over like the ba big bad patriarchy, but also Darling in the Franks. If you've ever seen that anime, it's a great one. Absolutely great. I didn't finish it. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's honestly the vibe that's getting me like. Okay, so these so these two are actually a series. Um, well, a duology. We have This Savage Song and Our Dark Duet, both by Victoria Schwab. Um, I've been meaning to pick these books up because uh, A, I played the violin for a couple of years. And B, I've never seen any books that are like music themed or surrounding music. Well, I've seen, there are characters that play music. <laughs> um, uh, Alien Galathinius. But uh, this one is based off of uh, music magic. And I was really interested in that. Also, I've never read a V.E. Schwab book. So I thought this would be a good thing to add to my repertoire. The next thing we have is also another series. It's actually a trilogy. And we have um ash princess lady smoke and ember ember queen all by uh laura sebastian laura yeah it's yeah it's laura sebastian um what i know about this series is kind of limited so i'm just gonna give you like a quick rundown of what i know uh there's this girl named theo whose kingdom got like uh got overtaken and um now she's kind of just like living as a maid in like another household until she decides you know what fuck this and decides, you know what, I'm gonna take my kingdom back. Screw all of you. <laughs> that's what I think happens. I'm not entirely certain, but I do think that's what it is. It's just like someone getting fed up with the system that they're living under and going, fuck it. <laughs> and we do love that. Next, we have a standalone contemporary. Um, Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. Um, this book is basically um, where two people, I think it's Penny and Sam, and they um, meet up, but neither of them are like very heavy on social interaction. So they decide all their interaction is going to be over text. And I was like, relatable. So relatable, because I hate talking to people. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. Anyways, this next book is about death. It's literally called Mortal Remains uh, by Mary Ann Fraser. Um, essentially, it's about this girl named Sh uh, Peak Cheat Cheat Lily Lily McRae, who works at her father's, who works at her family's like funeral parlor, and she's just more comfortable with death than other people. And then she gets a kick out of it when one of the people, one of the dead people, starts talking back to her. <laughs> I thought this was very interesting, um, simply because I've never heard of something of a concept like this before. And also books about death are just also very interesting because the way they tap, because, because death is a very layered thing. It's not like a one way street. You kind of have to tackle all of the like grief, the aftermath of, of death, of like who dies, as well as, um, as well as all the secret thoughts that other people are thinking of the dead person, you know? So I think death is a very interesting concept, but um, yeah, I'm excited to read this one eventually. <laughs> ah! Oh, God. <laughs> oh, why are you moving? Next book that we have, uh, st also still has the bargain sticker on it. Um, it is Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. I don't know anything about this book. I know nothing. I just picked it up because are you seeing this cover? Like look at this cover. Ignore the sticker, but look at this cover. It's gorgeous. And there's even some gold gilding on it. Mm. I couldn't I could not resist. Could not resist. 
uh from what i've seen online though this is queer it's a queer book um and i'm actually kind of excited because i've never really read what uh a book with like the queer elements and whatnot it's not like it's not like a preference thing it's just i've never been able to pick one up that i would like felt very interested in because a lot of the books that are in that are that like depict the lgbtqia community um are mainly romance books and I'm not one for romance books because it just feels so cliche. I'm just, I'm just not a romance book person. But this one just sounded, this one, I didn't know what it was about. I literally got through maybe like the first like two lines of the description and then picked it up because of the cover. Just look at this cover. But hold on. Now that, now I need to read this because I feel like, because I feel like I'm just like doing no justice here. Ooh, I'm now 10,000 times more interested in this now that I've read this. <laughs> Very excited. Very excited. The next book I picked up is Malice by John Gwynn. Gwynn? 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 Um, apparently what this book is, um, the way it's been described to me, uh, well, the way it's been described like online and whatnot, is Game of Thrones, but not. <laughs> that is a horrible description. That is a horrible, horrible description. I think one of the books was even one, because this is a four book series, and I think one of these books was uh, blurred by George R. R. Martin, who wrote Game of Thrones. So I'm not entirely certain. I'm not, I read the back of this in like the bookstore, and I swear to you, I know nothing like I can't even remember what happened. All I know is that it's about war and there's no romance to be seen in this book. And I'm honestly fairly excited because I think this is this counts as like high fantasy slash adult fantasy. And I've never ventured into that genre before. I'm just, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> so the next book I have is actually not even a fiction book. It's actually like a book that I picked up for uh, Black History Month, as you can see. Um, it's called Stamp from the Beginning by Ibram, by Ibram X. Kennedy. And essentially what this book is, is it's essentially a definitive history of racist ideas in America. It's not the history of racism. It's not the history of like black people in America. It's the definitive history of the racist idea the idea of racism um in america and i honestly was so excited because it just felt so correct because i read the hate you give a while ago and i have dear martin um that book but i haven't read it yet and this book i just felt very drawn to because it just like all all I've heard about the black community like in literature specifically has always been like some sort of fiction that feels too real um allegedly is one of them that I read um and recently um the hate you give has been resonating with me because um two of my family members um actually were shot and killed um and both of them were under the age of 25. Um, this happened a couple of years ago, but um, th but ever since then, that book has been resonating pretty heavily with me. And when I read, um, allegedly, that one just felt way too real because it just felt so realistic as to what can actually happen in those kinds of situations. That's a bad situation. But this, I just feel like, is going to be more... Clin a, a more clinical dive into it you know I didn't want anything to be like sugar-coated I didn't want anything to be like just weird <laughs> I'm, I'm explaining this so horribly but I just I just I think a definitive history like nothing fictional just like plain cut throat facts is something that I need because I just don't think I think I've just been looking at this through rose-colored colored glasses for a while and I think I just needed this to actually like break that you know you know that's just 
I explained that horribly in the first half, but you know what? We got through it. <laughs> All right, back to fiction. <laughs> so the next book we have is The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. The first time I heard about this book was by, um, who is she? Mel Reads uh, here on BookTube, but I thought it was interesting. And when I saw it on Barnes & Noble, I was like, yeah, gimme. <laughs> also, just look at this cover. Do you see how beautiful this is? Also, look at the spine, too. Do you see the spine? Like, beautiful, 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 beautiful. And also the back, like the catchphrase thing here is neither here nor there, but long ago. And essentially what this book is about, it's about this like thief slash criminal slash person. Um, uh, Luli Al-Nazari. Yeah. And she is in the business of like stealing magical artifacts and selling them off on the black market. Um, so she gets like captured by the Sultan one day and is tasked with helping his son, um, like find something, I think. Yeah, yeah, to find an artifact and whatnot. And she kind of doesn't really have a choice but to obey or risk execution because, you know, living is nice subjectively the next book we have is something is the is a book that i actually have never heard of um i don't even remember when i got it i don't even remember why i picked it up yeah i don't even oh now i remember why i picked it up okay so uh the next book we have is monsters born and made by tavi berwa berwa i'm gonna pronounce it that way um so first off look at this cover do we see do we see how beautiful? Okay. Now look at this. <laughs> oh, whoa. I forgot how pretty this book is. Okay. Now look at this gorgeousness. Do you see the hardback? And on the hardback it says, this is the ocean and you're a hunter. You swim with the monsters. You swim with monsters. These people cannot scare you. See, this is beautiful. I don't even remember what this book is about. All I know is that it's like some like brother sister relationship and I'm here for it, but also it's a beautiful book. Come on. You could not just expect me to just leave it. Are you joking? The next book we have, the last one actually, wow, this has been a while, um, is Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan. I don't know how to, Su Lin Tan. Su Lin Tan, her. And I know what you're thinking. Lulu, that's the second book. I'm very aware of that now. <laughs> I literally, I literally have the first book, first book, Daughter of the Moon, got us sitting in my Amazon cart right now. But I picked this up that because I just wanted to read this book, read this series for a while. I didn't know it was a series. I thought they were like two different standalones, but apparently they're series. It's a series and whatnot you know um and then uh when i pick this up i found out it was the second book and i was like damn it um so i went back to barnes and noble to find it but the thing is the only copies of daughter of the moon goddess they have are paperback and this is hardback and i know what you're thinking it's just like yo that's not that big of a deal it's a big deal to me <laughs> because it bothers me so very much when my series don't match in their editions. Like if it's paperback and then hardback, it just looks weird to me. Um, see, okay. So for the uh, Ember in the Ashes series, um, my the first two books are paperbacks. The last two are hardbacks. That stuff, no fault of my own. I bought these two books before I got this one in hardback and this one in hardback. I got I got Sky Beyond the Storm for Christmas and I think I bought and I think I bought a Reaper against Reaper at the Gates a couple of months before that. But it works now because they kind of match. <laughs> I'm not as mad about it anymore. But mm, there's another book series that bothers me. Hold on. Scythe and Thunderhead. Can you see this? Like, it's so obvious that they don't match and I hate it. <laughs> like, this is also in my bar in my in my cart in Barnes and Noble, actually. 
because I just need I'm, I'm gonna donate this copy but um I decided I want them all to be floppy because they're just great and floppy and also this is the first one I picked up and I got this one for like Christmas I think I think possible I don't remember actually but it just bothers me so I have it in my cart on Amazon so like don't hate me <laughs> but uh if you oh okay oh god oh god can you can you see that oh god that stack is just off so if we haven't made it very clear yet i am not irresponsible i just don't have any self-control <laughs> And I know this is this video has taken me a while to film. Uh, I decided to make this video just to like kind of hold myself accountable because I do have issues. But I think what I'm also going to do is I'm, this is going to be the start of a series on my channel where I go through my book purchases for the month instead of like doing book hauls, like separate book haul videos. It's just going to be like a monthly update on the books, you know? So I think that could be interesting. Anyway guys, that will be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more of my content, please subscribe so you get a notification every time I post. I'm going to try and post every week or two weeks. Uh, mainly because I just don't know how heavy my workload for college will be. And also I need time to figure out what I'm going to film. So there's that. Um... But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love my I love you my lumas. Bye.